Hello. Hello. How's it going? Fantastic. And yourself? Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Jared, great to see you here as well. Thank yeah. you. Good. Good. We've got Laura as well logging in. I've got a uh, Martin Luther King Jr. book, Chaos or Community, Where Do We Go From Here? Book yeah. Well, that I've had on the shelf for a few months that I bought. And I share that only because as I was kind of just getting space, sacred space set up and it is 3.30, so I'm just gonna light the candle to the sacredness of today's ceremony to have begun. And so I appreciate each of you for coming here. And then I just want to invite you to do a little clearing as well in case you brought anything with you as we oftentimes do. So I'm just lighting some sage and I encourage you to just understand the sacredness that is required for healing to take place and how community is part of what ultimately leads us to our greatest healing. So I'm just drawing some smudging over some sage to me and then some sage to you as well if you wanted to just clear out anything that you may have brought. Amazing, woohoo, great to see each of you here. Thank you guys for tuning in today. And I wanted to call this meeting because there's a lot of things that are going on right now. And I am bringing my worlds together on the off week of a music project that I really think is going to revolutionize a lot of people's worlds in many ways because of the heart that it's being created with and because of the people that are becoming involved with this. And so what I was hoping for today is to actually introduce to you the 22 levels of emotion that I have applied to the theory of a high rise building. So it's the same address and completely different experience based on which floor within that building you're looking at life through. So that's a really top of the waves introduction to the teaching that I wanted to make sure everyone was aware because last week when Rimini was guiding us through an incredible recoding process for that project, she had asked specifically why 22 and I had said because that's the number of emotions that were in Abraham Esther Hicks's emotional guidance system and then I applied that to the idea that it's the same address but completely different view depending on which aspect of our own emotional states we're looking at life through. And so that being said, remembering too that emotion is energy in motion and mental health issues is often because we're stuck in a loop in our heads that is not allowing us to be in our hearts and music actually brings us into our hearts. That's why it's all about frequency. It's about resonance. It's about dropping down so we can settle our nervous system. And I say that at 333. So I would really love to just breathe together. Chantel, I see that you joined in. And then Jared, I see that Susie just joined in our Mad Hatters link. And I wonder if you might be able to just message her and let her know that this is a different link from the normal Mad Hatters Mystic Music album 22 project link just because uh -huh. it's separate it is a separate thing but it's as timely as ever so i wanted to give us a chance to go live as well and then i appreciate that we have some of the musicians who are participating in the mystic music album 22 project in here and Jared Wade is the co-host who helped me think of this idea. He was huge in that. And so I wanted to give Jared an opportunity to have a chance to share why we're doing this project in the first place as I get us going live over on Facebook. So Jared, if you would take the floor and explain the project and why we're doing it, I feel it would be very useful to people. Okay. 
Well, um, basically, we're doing this project because I found that music is very healing, very, very powerful as far as a tool that we have to uplift and to let go of the traumas of our past. When we're listening to music, we go through emotion. We go through the emotion that it's being conveyed through the song. The whole, the whole reason and purpose for getting involved in music in the first place was because I, my brother and I both needed a place of expression to find healing for ourselves. And we started working on that project together. And then we grew that out to a, a bigger website. And then it was like, okay, great, fabulous place where people can share, share the music that they've created, this great, great music. And then I thought, okay, well, there needs to be something more. We need to do something more with this. And Laura um, brought to my attention that we need to bring people together and actually do something. And um, it just struck me. It struck me very deeply that she was exactly right. And I said, okay, well, I, I would like your help to do this. And um, as we, we pressed forward, we had our first meeting in December. And the, just the synergy and the energy that came from that meeting just prompted some more direction and more purpose to why we're meeting together. And we're, we're meeting together because there's power in numbers. There's power in lifting each other up. It's so much easier for an artist, especially an artist who's poured their heart and soul into the creation that is their music, to lift up other artists that they know have done the same thing than to put themselves out there in a position of vulnerability and say, here's my song, please tell me what you think. But when we're lifting up other artists and saying, hey, this song's wonderful, you guys should check these songs out from these other artists that I found that are that are amazing. And hey, I got a track on there too. Well, then it's so much easier to, to be able to reach out and do that. And I know for myself that I'm in a position to where I'm going to be coming into a couple, a little bit of resources that are going to enable me to create a, a place to do that, to create a, an instance of doing that. And so I wanted to be able to offer that to musicians that I found to be inspiring and uplifting, to be able to participate in this project and, and reach out and uplift and build their fellow musicians. And that was, that's the impression that I've got from, from participating in this project, excuse me. Beautiful. And uh, that's the impression and the direction that we're going with it is we're, as I've, I've been reaching out to different people, I found different people in the middle of the night who reach out to me with a song or I reach out to because of a song and we're able to connect that instant. And then, you know, with them looking over and, and looking at some of the past summits and looking and really deciding they wanted to be part of this, you know, by the next day we have another song in the cache. And so we're, and then I had a lady reach out to me who's, who's classically trained as an opera singer. And she hasn't really done much with that, but she's a mental health professional. And she does, that's her professional job. That's her professional experience. And she wrote, she went and did a DNA test. And then she, um, she was reading through it and found a lot, of, a lot of things. She had, she realized she had DNA from all over the world, from Vietnam and from, from Africa and, and to look at her, she's white as the snow and she comes mostly from Scotland and, and the Celtic heritage in Ireland. But she's got heritage from all over the world. And so she wrote a song about, she wrote a poem rather about her heritage, uh, about her, her lineage. And it was one of those things that it was just a given to her. And when she's reading it to me, she read this, this poetry to me and it struck me, this is a song. This is a song for this album and there's a very in, intense purpose and reason for this song. And it's because globally, we're all connected. We are all related and we are all one human race. And the, the message that I found in her poem 
was about uniting people, but also about com combating human trafficking, which she was not necessarily intending, but it was a song she said that was a message that was just given to her. And so she wrote it down. And when, when she read it to me, the power of the words that she had struck me very deep. And she, um, she plays the hand pan. So that's, you know, it's just a, another resonating uh, frequency driving instrument that helps with meditation. And so we're working to combine those two elements and to, to create a song for the album. And then there's just so many other artists that I've been able to talk to about creating a song that, that they've been in music for a while, but they don't necessarily have something that tells their story. And then artists that have reached out to me with perfect songs that they had and they've created and that they've shared um, that just fit exactly with what we're doing. And so it's just a, it's been an amazingly powerful opportunity and it's the reason and purpose is to help lift and build the artists that are creating this kind of music and to help introduce them to the world. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing your passion and heart in coming up with and spearheading this project. And today is an example of the fact that if we have something that comes onto our heart and calls us, it's generally coming to your heart specifically because you're the one that can do it because we never have something that calls on our heart that we don't have capacity for because whatever label you want to put on the grand overall designer it's not mean by nature or design and this is the thing that I wrote out which isn't really connected specifically to this but I was having the conversation right beforehand and I it was I was having the conversation that was identifying a cultural pattern that is not healthy and it was the normalized, ah, it's natural. And I said, no, it's normal. And there is a difference. And one of the things that is beautiful about music is that everybody understands it. And we don't have to have put separators into boxes to say that this symbol means this and this one means this. We understand it because of how it feels for us. And mental health is something that we understand or don't understand because we've become so different, we've become so distant and separated from our own emotions. And that's why I really feel and have felt for the last four years while I've been working on, as many of you know, what I call the book that rewrote me before the world got to see the version that I'll finish after I finished the 66 days to transform yourself image series at the end of December and then started the 33 days to dream a new dream together series that I finished today. And I say that because each of those projects defined me and changed me. And this project participating in it is changing us. And at the end of it, you're going to be changed and you're going to have more tools in your toolbox to be able to use to maneuver the uncertainty of feelings and emotional states that take us out of the present moment and into a past not now moment that ultimately feels very powerful because we have so much energy there and we're angry and that's where our music can take us back to. But what I really want to encourage as we really do this is to become mindful of the fact that our emotions when stuck in the not now moments, which forgiveness I am finding is that sword that cuts us free from those not now moments ultimately is how we can most powerfully be the natural men and women of the lands that we share, regardless of where in the world you're watching this from, we're global citizens. We've got a global problem right now, and it's actually, as Stephen pointed out to me, and I'd never made the connection of before, the pandemic, because it's actually treason by pen. And so then we can look at it like the victim that really goes down into that feeling of powerless, 
fear, grief, depression, despair, insecurity. Uh, we've got abusive government. Then uh, how can we, the people, possibly do anything? Because everything feels so heavy and on top of the victim that is looking on the triangle up to the persecutor or punisher to ultimately take them down and the rescuer outside of themselves to be able to save them from the story that oftentimes we can't pull ourselves out of until we become a different size to the problem. Because it's not that the problem needs to change specifically, it's that we need to grow bigger. And the only way that we can grow bigger is to simply change the frequency that we're willing to dial into because this little box in red here is actually pink. But red is the color of a sovereign being, or red is the color of blood. Purple in ink is the color of a sovereign. Black and blue, if you actually look into the Sequi V Act of 1666, those colors are associated with the corporate identity that was claimed when trusts were formed in our name with the birth certificates that Stephen has been informing us about. And that when we don't know what is the truth, then we seek out the things that seem real. But the problem is that there's so much that's being purported as truth that's actually only fear-based which is not only false evidence appearing real, like so many are familiar with Wayne Dyer saying it is. But what I finally, a couple of days ago realized is that it's actually the false emotion appearing real that we're being put into. And music has the opportunity to reharmonize humanity to by adding in that extra E of energy as to where we are willing to focus so that instead of feeling powerless and like it's the ones on top in the positions we've elected them to be in that are ultimately doing some pretty crazy things that they'll be held personally responsible for, it's time for us to rise up in our emotional states to actually reach to the level of boredom, which is at the top of a downward spiral, which is when the emotions get really easy to just fall downwards with. And instead, we reach for contentment instead. And there seems to be a parallel with the tense you had to go into to get yourself registered, like what Stephen was saying, and how it's the con to the tent that determines how we ultimately go about what we do. But these are the views that I look at life with. And I'm not saying they're right, but what I am saying is that together, we are a lot stronger than if we are all in our own little boxes, feeling safely separated from one another when our power is when our hearts overlap, which happens within six foot distant. And there's so much more to all of this that I, the reason Chantelle and I, for instance, have been co-hosting the lawfully organized summits on Thursdays at four o'clock is because we need to have a plan as great as the ones that have been written in Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 and now Agenda 2050 that would really have humanity not be the natural men and women that we are. So that is the reason I called this meeting today. And it is to say that there is an incredible project that you're invited to participate in, whether you're here live or whether you're listening back to it. And so we're pulling together resources and we understand that people are where the power is. And then we also, I wanted to have the opportunity for other people to come in and have a space where we can say you're not alone. And that now every other week when we're not doing the Mystic Music, Bad Hatters album 22 experience together, then we'll just do this and come together and share an opportunity and a tool that can uplift and cut us free from the past so that we can show up fully present. So, Stephen? No, I wanna actually uh, put in on all that music and with how, you know, we're, like the music really is a big part of how we do uh, everything in our lives. Like, you know, there was points in my life where when I felt like a lot of stuff was going on, I, you know, made sure I wasn't listening to any music that had like words in it because I felt that words brought back the emotion you were trying to escape from. And I would put on like classical or I would put on like, you know, just nature going on and I would have it on for like three, four days continuous. And this would be like, I think my way of getting away from the storm that's always around us. And, you know, we need to focus on the things that we need to. And 
you know, we get manipulated by the music, by the words they say, just like, you know, TV at the same time. You know, we might have, a, you know, like for instance, we, we might feel that uh, we see things on TV that might manipulate our mind, just like the music does the same sort of thing with it. And it wasn't until you really get away from the music that you really have that clear mind because you're always like, it's like you want to escape the things that are, you know, the, 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 the play on the bad going through your mind by bringing back words within those musics. And, you know, to find something that's more on like, you know, that positive avenue, um, you know, if it's birds, you know, it's, it should be like positive words coming out. I find that, you know, it, our music plus our, our TV shows have made a difference on the way our society is, you know, living today as well. And, you know, it's a big part of, I would say, all of this to get away from the, the manipulation, like, you know, it gets bred into your mind that, you know, they start talking about things that we think is really bad, but they almost on TV make it seem like, oh, it's just, you know, an everyday thing, which, you know, gets everyone else starting to think, oh, it's just an everyday thing. Or the fact that, you know, it's all over the news that, you know, people are getting away with, you know, murder or people are getting away with rape. They're in these pu public offices and they're getting away with it. And these are on TV. And then it starts happening in the, in the view of our eyes. And it's like they prepared for us to be able to just, you know, accept it. And these are like within our music as well, I believe. Programming is huge. And so part of mental health is really becoming responsible for the programming within our own minds. And our words, I didn't, it was a, the episode on Mother Mary and the Rosary with Michael Seegers, if anyone's watched it. And I was blown away. And I think I even said about my mind popped when he said it because very knowledgeable. Michael very much is, yes. And he combined the sword of being the sacred word when we wield it responsibly. And then bringing in the archangels and understanding the fact that regardless of our faith foundation, we can't be the only things here or the only ones here. And if we understand the universe is the one song we're all singing and that we can influence each other to either spiral downward because we've caught on to somebody's negative thinking and then turned it into a pattern that's very rough and jolting and takes them all the way down to feeling bad. Or we can actually lift and use contentment as the starting place for us to then start feeling hopeful and optimistic and have positive expectation, which is the thing that we have to understand about the music that we're creating. And it's essentially understanding that words do not have power. That's why this radio station that I pointed out earlier and then I drifted onto a different topic, ultimately this represents us. And the frequencies that come out of the antenna of the radio station of us, is ultimately going to then be received by whoever or whatever it is that you believe receives all of the prayers of which everyone that's uttered is remembered and stored in the collective super consciousness that Rim Rimini actually took us into with the recoding exercise she did last week and I'd love to have her speak into as well. And then ultimately those experiences or those expectations then get matched with experiences given back to us that match what we were expecting. And so that's when we then have to understand James Allen's book named As a Man Thinketh. It goes, so is he, because whatever we're putting out ultimately are the seeds that then get, are given back to us in the form of experience. And so that's when we have to understand the power of what we're putting into these songs and why if we can actually understand how to infuse the music with positive vibes, if we can understand how to infuse the words themselves with light language and codes that actually hit people from a different space because of who we became in the process of ushering those words from our lips or through the strum of our string, for instance. Chantal, do you have something you wanted to say for there? You just muted, I couldn't hear you speaking anymore. Could you guys hear her or was it just me? 
I could hear. Oh, it was just me then. I didn't hear any of that, but that's all right. Continue. Sorry. No, it's good. It's okay. You were supposed to be seen. Hello, Chantel. Absolutely. And Chantel actually has a lot to share in terms of the rapid transformation therapy training that you've been doing for quite some time, which is all about hypnosis and language and neuro-linguistic programming and being able to actually talk to the subconscious, which is how we actually change the emotional attachment to the not now moment of the past because we change our emotional attachment to it or the relationship we have with that past moment. Is there anything that you feel could benefit somebody that was singing to the heartstrings of somebody who was hurting the way that many people that go through mental health crises, which in fact is oftentimes connected to an enlightenment or a change in frequency of our own selves and being that ultimately doesn't feel familiar any longer. And then therefore we feel foreign to ourselves, but it's just, we are literally upgrading our frequency. Like when we get sick, that's the body's way of resetting itself from my perspective. So whenever I get a sniffle or if I'm starting to feel under the weather, generally it's because I've done something energetically that up leveled me and shifted me into an unfamiliar state of being that my body is cellularly not yet familiar with and so then I don't feel comfortable and I don't feel well and then all of a sudden I feel better than ever so that's just a different way to look at sickness for instance anybody have a contribution Susie I know you often have a lot to share and you're one of the contributing artists in the project as well. Well, thanks for asking me <laughs> to say something. Um, you know, I often say, cause even Jared has contacted me and said, you know, you can be as, um, uh, what would be the word? Like just, you know, to contribute more information wise. And I say like, I sit back and I, I love listening because there's so much information. I am not familiar with all these things. I've always been kind of this person who's very spiritual, but on a very, just, you know, doing the meditation, doing the yoga. I read a lot of the books that you're mentioning, um, like As a Man Thinketh and all of that. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm at that level of professionalism where I can actually preach to people other than just talking about my own personal experiences. Because I have done motivational speaking, but any of that has always been um, just telling my own story because I don't want to be that person preaching to people. I don't think I have the level of expertise to be able to come off as an expert. Um, but, you know, sometimes real life experiences is enough to show people that look what happens when you do this and you follow through on these things that appear to be theories. Um, you know, your life can change. And for me, it did a 180 complete turnaround um, and I have children and now I see how it's affecting my children. They're also looking at life differently. And, you know, I don't have to tell them what to do anymore. They do the right thing because they feel it. And it's crazy. So just things like that. I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I do want to say one thing. It's very comforting to talk to people who I'm never someone who goes to one extreme or another on anything. I always believe that, you know, everything is possible. And until I see evidence of one thing clearly or another, I always leave it kind of open. But having said that, with what's going on right now in the world, absolutely, I, I mean, I've traveled, I went to the States and did a festival at a time when everything's like, you know, stay away from people, everybody distance. And I went, no, we're, you know, I'm not gonna put people in, um, a situation where they're being compromised health wise or whatever and you know we gave out masks whatever everybody wants to do it was a drive-in festival but it was a music festival and i said let it be just what it is we had no issue nothing and people were laughing and dancing and having a great time it was like the best day of my life you know and, and to me i look back and that was one of the best things i could have possibly ever done and it proved to me that we need to make sure we are not afraid of each other and afraid of people and what is being put out there. I'm just like, no, we weren't put on this earth to be separated. We're here, like what you're talking about, I'm all about uplifting people. And for me, 
a successful day is a day when I've had a conversation with someone and I made them feel just a little bit better or someone asked me something and I was able to help out or make them see it in a different way. You know, people put these big expectations of what success is, and especially with us being in the music industry and what people think success is. The success is making a human being and the people around you feel better. That's what feels better for yourself more than that, nothing, you know, and yeah, that's my two cents. There you go. <laughs> I'd say it was more like five, but that's beautiful. <laughs> As in more valuable than two, but yeah, absolutely beautiful. It's five Canadian cents, so that's worth less. <laughs> I'm Canadian too, honey. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, there you go. <laughs> I, think, I think that nobody should really have to feel worried about what they say if they're around good people, right? And uh, everyone has something important to say, regardless if you know, they would go, might feel that it's not right, but you know what, obviously it's on your head to say it and it should be said. And anybody who's acting in good faith or, you know, listening in good faith is, you know, always going to take everything in, in really good context. But, you know, a couple of the things that I think that, you know, that I could contribute in terms of helping people with, uh, you know, feeling down, depressed or anything like that, you know, is, you know, there's some certain uh, balances our body will automatically do for us. Uh, like, for instance, like the negative and ions that flow through this area right here. And what happens is it's like there's like a, a little area where everything starts to kind of reproduce itself and go back around in the cycle. And the more you are drowning, the more neg uh, more positive ions are going through. And in this case, positive ion is actually bad. And when you smile and, and and people can try this out and you can tell them to you know do it themselves is go in you know to the washroom or if they can just right in the in front of themselves just put a fake smile even if it's fake for three to five minutes and what will end up happening is that positive that negative flow starts going through and if you keep doing that every time you feel down it'll help out with getting that negative ion going through that part and it does help out with your state of mind in that situation it literally tricks the mind because the mind feels that we're smiling and it says, oh, I must have something to be happy for. And so it actually triggers the RAS or the reticular activating system to notice things that we're searching for. For instance, you'll notice that whatever vehicle you drive or whatever kind of dog you might have, for instance, you notice more of those kind of vehicles on the road or those kind of dogs when you're out and about or on TV. And it's like, oh, there must be a lot of those. No, it's just the fact you're noticing more of them because your reticular activating system is attuned to that particular car or that particular thing that makes you notice it, even though it was always there. So whatever we Put our attention to we start to notice and it grows and whatever we want to move our attention away from unless we give ourselves something to focus on instead of that the universe doesn't differentiate negative so it will only give us more of what we don't want which is exactly why mother Teresa, for instance said i will never attend an anti-war rally but host a peace rally and i'll bring my bells and whistles Maybe not her words, maybe mine, but <laughs> that's the point. It's like, we can no longer be anti-bullying. We can't be anti-masks. We can't be anti-vaxxers. We can't be anti-anything because what's actually happening in that distinguishing ourselves from the ones that don't is we're actually checking another box in the genocide hit list. There's 10 qualities or criteria, and we're getting a lot of them hit right now, which sounds really grotesque, and it feels like a very peaceful day, so it kind of feels out of the way to even say such a thing, because it's like, but that doesn't match what's actually present right now, so I want to acknowledge the story that I just brought in and the emotion that may have just shown up within you, and I want you to ask yourself how it felt and how that serves you and then how it's going to serve everyone who comes into contact you from this place. Because what's gonna happen is we're going to pass that energetic ripple effect outwards unless we own it within our own selves. And I don't mean the selves that we are and see ourselves to be, I mean the C-E-L-L-S of our own selves that are either going to be filled with faith or fear. And so with mental health, 
it's either the story about something we have no control over often that we ruminate on and that takes us out of the moment and we have no ability to change because those stories about agendas that people have for unsuspecting people don't uplift us and anybody that has went far enough down those rabbit holes understand it's not good down there and that we can either give more of our energy time energy effort attention money to that story that narrative or we can redirect it which is what we're doing today so today it's 404 and so we've got 26 more minutes of the time allotted to be able to share a personal story to share a reason that you choose to be part of this experience. Rimini, I see you're not on camera and I know that you're in the UK and you've got family commitments, so it may not be convenient for you to say anything today, but the recoding process you let us through in last week's session was very profound. And what was beautiful is that instead of each individual going through a recoding process, we actually did it for the collective. And it became about the project that all of us were bringing together. And so as much as not everyone in view right now see themselves necessarily as a musician, because I did invite others who aren't necessarily musically inclined or inspired specifically, but it is to say that we're all artists. And we're all conscious creators, or we're all creators of some sort, some less consciously than others. But all of us have the capacity to be part of this project, regardless of whether we see ourselves as the ones performing or not. Because ultimately, if we put our energy together, and then we can become the foot soldiers for a great movement, we can make change happen in a way that the agendas that we think have power stand no chance because it's like I may stand before you as one like what Maya Angelou I think originally said it and I heard it from Oprah who quoted her saying that but I come before you as the 10,000 who came before me because we embody all of what they did for us to be able to be here and just as over in China for instance where you can be born into prison because your grandfather was a thief for stealing bread to feed the family and then be paying for those choices which seem to be of a forced hand in nature anyway for centuries or we can just say hey like we're we're the reflections of all that came before us and when we do the healing work we do it for not only us but the ones who come after for seven generations i've been told and the ones who came before seven generations of old too so it's like what we're doing right now, the ripple effects energetically in a world that is not just the literal 3D form that we see is profound beyond measure. So I really just want to point that out before someone else takes the floor too, please. Okay, so uh, I'll just say I want another really fast thing, another way to help out with uh, the feeling. And, you know, a lot of people uh, can do this very easily and a lot of people might not realize it but just the stance of like you know the, what they would call the superman stand I mean that brings a lot of like positive endorphins you know I, I you know people don't do it I, I I you know maybe some people thought it was like you know because people thought they were like thought they were too big on themselves but it's actually a very good posture that actually you know does give you it, it almost immediately works right away um, and everyone should try that if they ever feel like you know lack of confidence or you know, a little bit of uh, depression or anything like that, it should help, you know, so just another little thing I wanted to add in there. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, what we act as if we are, we become. So stand and act confident, and so you become it. Fake it till you make it is a saying that I've not liked in truth, because I'm not about fake in any way, and it's just never resonated. It's just like, why fake it? Why not just work to be it? But I feel like for somebody like me, and maybe the fact that you found yourself here or whether it's in the replay or whether it's live, I, 
I've been so hard on myself because I have such higher expectations and standards for myself that I thought other people did too. I thought other people had similarly high standards and expectations for themselves and for life the way that I always have. And I've taken the judgments of other people personally for years because what I'm doing hasn't been done before. And you may be experiencing something similar, but the thing is, is no one can actually see our vision until we bring it into reality, until we give them the steps to lay it out. It's like two days ago, I had the inspired idea that the Mystic Music Mad Hatter's Album 22 project next summit wasn't happening for another week in a bit. And so it's just like, well, there's a perfectly good Tuesday at 3.30 that I am available and we could gather and keep the momentum going. So why not just bridge the gap between everything else that we're doing? And mental health is the answer, I feel. We're all in that space where we've become so fixated on the mental that we forgot about the fact that the mind only matters when it, the heart says go. It's just like Carolyn Mace has the expression or where she uses the uh, symbolism of papa bear for the mind, mama bear for the heart, and baby bear for the throat. And what she shared is about how at around four or three or four in the afternoon around happy hour time, that's actually where there's a shift in predominant focus from the head, which leads for the first part of the day into happy hour, where then we move into the heart. And so a lot of us get really uncomfortable when we're about to step into our heart. And so then we say, oh, no, let's, let's not do that. And then baby bears in the middle there trying to bridge the gap between the head and the heart and Papa Bear's got his arms folded and Mama Bear's upset that he's not doing what he's supposed to do. And it's just like the fight of the little baby bear then trying to stand up for himself is a challenge. So that's another perspective. I mean, I'm, I'm the oldest of four. So I know like the, uh, you know, the, the, the differences between everybody and we all come under one roof, but we all have our completely different characters. And, you know, to learn to come together and you know have a common ground with each other and still respect each, each other's individuality um you know it, it, it's a working and it was and you know as you grow you you know how to mend all of those those mendings and but that kind of mending like when you work it into the real world of like uh like you were saying like you know we have to do something for our generations to come as they've done generations below us. And, you know, by just watching it happen or allowing it to be okay in one area, but not okay on this land, say for instance, is not okay because then you start thinking about just yourself and then we're not collective as a whole anymore. And we end up being divided again and we don't need that sort of thing from happening. And we have to learn to teach people what corruption looks like, what negative energy looks like that's trying to be put in front of us, you know, brainwashing, manipulation, any of that stuff through music, including through music and, and things that we watch. I think that, you know, we, we should um, not stop, even if we figure out what we're doing in our Canadian land, I don't think we should be stopping and we should be pushing this and pushing this until we cover every space on this earth you know with with a positive flow and in terms of like our mind and our heart and everything they have the, i don't know if anybody's heard about the nocebo effect you ever heard of the nocebo effect anybody here nocebo or placebo the nocebo i know the placebo but the nocebo not the nocebo okay so the nocebo effect is much like the placebo effect but what it is is like when you go to a doctor sometimes some people will go in get like some sort of testing and you know, if you're like, oh, you know, you got cancer. Now, what really happens in most cases is you've actually admitted to hearing that you have the cancers and then your brain actually enacts those cells within you. And that's called the nocebo effect because you trust in their word. And then because you trust in their word, your brain accepts it and actually activates it because we always have the cells in us, but it activates it because you've actually put your mind to that position, right? And 
this is the nocebo effect, and they do this in many ways within uh, our society. So I, I know that was a little off, but yeah, just uh, don't know why I had to come out. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, they say that actually we start biologically aging at the age that we believe to be middle age when we were growing up. So if we actually consider when we thought was old while we were growing up, that is when our body will biologically start to age. And I have my first gray hair that is somewhere around here because it. I, I went through a lot of stress, but it's just like I started to age because I must be at around the age when I believe to be old age because I'm, I'm starting to do that. And so I just ridge, ripped off of that. And then also see that Rimini is in the screen, which means that you may be able to say something about the recoding experience and even the super conscious, conscious subconscious connection that really we're working with in this project, with what you did and wherever you feel you want to go from there. Sure. Hi, everybody. Hello. Nice to meet faces I haven't seen before. Um, yeah, last week was lots of fun. It was brilliant to really hear everybody's vision and it comes to life as like its own entity. It was like we all sat there and really stepped into this end result of creating this amazing album that just, you know, really reached people in the moments of the, they need, that they needed to hear our message. Um, yeah, and so I don't know, I don't think anybody else was, oh yeah, Susie, you were here, weren't you, and Jared? Um, but yeah, for those of you who weren't here, basically it was a process to tap into the conscious and the subconscious and the superconscious. Um, field so that basically you can um, release the emotions that create the beliefs that create the focus that creates your life so it's like kind of just like pulling the straw out and allowing it to just all dissolve and by speaking with the superconscious, you kind of um you access the field that is a unified field that, co that connects all of humanity. And it's also the field that we come into with a lot of it pre, like you were saying about the seven generations forwards and forward and back. Um, so we come in like those 10,000 women that have stood before us. Like we have certain um, characteristics and beliefs and energies that we can bring in. Like if, if our great, 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 great grandfather got ripped off by somebody who was really rich he and was left with nothing to feed his family that could leave him with like a really charged frozen emotion that then signifies to be scared of people with money so then you're born into this family you know 200 years later and you're like I don't like, I don't like people with money and you see kind of push it away and you kind of repeat this program of like attracting that energy into your life like people that are mean with money or whatever and and so it can be so deep that you don't, you couldn't possibly know that because, you know, we're not handed. This is the history of your family. <laughs> like, we, we don't get that manual. Um, we just kind of rock up in these human bodies having a human experience, right? And we're like, oh, I keep attracting this same experience. <laughs> cool. And it's really, I love what you're saying, Laura, as well, because it's really poignant. There's several things that you guys have spoken about today who I was like, oh, this is so why I'm here right now. <laughs> Because I managed to shift the situation with my um with my father with my son's father, that's been like a loop, <laughs> and it's been like that mentation of like oh this is what they're like this is you know and almost you know just all these the kind of I guess projections and like I don't know mental entrapments where it's like I'm not going to get anywhere from there, <laughs> it's just I'm not going to, and I really like I was just picking up my son from nursery. And I kind of asked for it. I could pray. I prayed and was like, right, you know, I've got this call later. Let me have a miracle. <laughs> Let me just have a miracle because I'm, I don't have the answers. <laughs> and I kind of spoke into superconscious and I was like, you know, asking to release whatever would kind of block me from experiencing that different reality. And it was so amazing. My son like fell asleep on the way home. So I had this five minutes with a tree. <laughs> And I just sat and I touched this tree and I really asked the tree just to like, I could feel this like cool energy in my gut. And I was like, okay, I just give it away to the earth. I give it away to the earth and I call in what's going to serve me. And suddenly I had this amazing feeling of just like being the source for 
basically allowing everyone to enjoy life like just being that energetic stand so that my whole family regardless of what the family looks like you know who's with who who's not with who which countries we're in like we all get to feel joy and feel connected you know and like I'm I'm not gonna I, I was looking at it the other way around like they have to treat me like this with respect and blah, 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 you know always make things fair and you know like okay cool but no <laughs> you're, you're not being what it is that you wish to receive and and so and it's because of you know I've seen my family go through all sorts of stuff historically so you know that all that imprint all that programming that you know I'm not going to get it get from I'm not going to get to the end result that I want to from where I'm standing because I have so much charged emotion that is not just mine it's seven generations back you know and it's also the programming of just see, being in my home with my you know my dad and my stepdad like that seeing that stuff it's all like in there and so being able to speak and tap beyond that space it's not my conscious it's not my subconscious it's super conscious where I can actually just talk and ask for guidance that's beyond my knowing beyond my understanding and allow the space it's kind of like magic because it just allows the space to like all of that bs to just melt away and for me to suddenly embrace this whole new potential and the conversation I had was just magical and it was like just all just the whole charge had shifted and was able to not only stay in my power but like show up it with joy and com you know compassion and gratitude and it was just liberating so yeah so yeah I'm really happy that I'm here with you guys and I hope that kind of made some sense <laughs> um but yeah talking to your point Susie about sharing life experience um because that's a really you know wonderful way to demonstrate like transformation and stuff so yeah lovely to be here with you guys Ooh, I'm glad you're here too. You know, at least I am. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I wanted to say something, but then I lost my train of thought. So if I get back, I'll actually say it because I had something to do with what you were saying there. Oh yes, actually now I got it. Okay, um, by being trained in the mind and and it being set back from so many generations. I mean, this is kind of like how, like even though we had all these uh, these rights to be free and everything how it was still kept in our prison was by the minds of our parents because back or our parents before their parents, we'll say, um, because when they went to work at this point in time, you know, they made a mistake. They actually got beat for it. Right. So they were like, they would be, you know, somebody make a mistake and they would whip somebody in front of all the employees because that person made a mistake, but they could set the example that nobody else makes that mistake. And because of that, once we got this, like say freedom, you know, it's like, just do what you're told, just do what you're told, just go out and work, just, you know, just do what you're told, because they're afraid that you're going to be conflicted with that same sort of pain, right? And then it just becomes like a natural, like, enslavement to the rest of the world by that mindset of what we've been grown to do, because not only have we, we're not being told now by the people outside, we're being told by our own unit with inside to just obey and just do as you're told do it the way they're telling you and you know it's like you kind of when, when when you start getting taught that you start to lose the actual who you actually are and forgetting that it's uh you know basically everything that you hold inside that's negative it's like you're holding your mind in prison and you can never set yourself free when you hold on to any of the negative when you hold on to any of the positive and i think the best way to ever look at anything is never look at it as like a negative thing. Look at it like, you know what, this is what I learned from you. You know, maybe it was awful, right? And, 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 you know, I've had some pretty awful things and I'm sure a lot of people out there have had worse than I've had. But I think the, the main point is like to try and take it to be like, okay, what did I learn and how could I, was it, what was the purpose? You know, did I experience that so I could teach something later on? Did I, did that happen to me? Because, you know, maybe you don't understand it right now. Like for one of my stories, I had a, somebody that I knew and their baby basically almost choked. And the person told me what they had done. And this person ended up being like somebody I never got along with after. But interestingly enough, somebody that treated me really bad, my son was in a situation where he choked. And if it wasn't for him telling me what he had told me, I would never have been able to save my, my son. So it's very interesting that 
even bad still brings good, even if we don't feel the good at the moment. And that's what you got to look for is saying, okay, something better is going to happen. You know, if someone buds in front of a line, well, guess what? You know, in the future, you're going to be put in front of the line instead. And you just allow it to happen. Let karma take its place because karma will always take its place. But the energy that you spin within karma will always come back. And karma will give you a hundred examples of this is, this is bad, this is bad. And how are you going to spin it off? And how are you going to put it back out? After you've done it a hundred thousand times, maybe karma starts saying, you know what? I'm only going to give you back good karma because you've only made your karma so strong. That's all you're going to get back. And so that's what you need to come with sense with. Like people used to call me a word witch because when I would say something, it would happen. And, and it's weird because it, it, it happens. And this is like the power of our mind, right? We think like, you know what? I go to this restaurant, I'm going to have a bad food plate of food. Most likely you're probably going to have a bad plate of food. But if you're like, oh yeah, this is really good or anything, it's going to be there. And it's going to taste great, you know, because your mind is set on that. And I think mind play is a very key important play on who we are and how we connect ourselves to the world instead of like, you know, letting ourselves be imprisoned by the emotion and the feelings of it. Try and learn and be uh, free from those emotions and know what to avoid, what to change, you know, and, and not everything can be changed, but like having that knowledge is to know that you were given a gift to help many, many people out there. And that's why he burdened you with that feeling because it was kind of like, he knew you could handle it and then you can change things. We have to go into the mind of experience and do all of the excavating of all of the rock and rubble and debris that gets chipped away from the edges of that cave that we saw value in, though it wasn't complete. And then put all of that rubble into the, the you guys know the thing that's on the track that you push out the cart, you put it into the cart and then you push it out of the mine. And then it's like, if we do not extract the experience or the lessons from the experience. It's like going into the cave and doing all of that work and then pushing that cart halfway out and then just deciding not to get it all the way to the sifting station because it was too much work and you were so upset with it and you didn't want to have to just keep on doing the work until it's oh, and then you dump it over. And then not only do you have a mess along your way, you also possibly have some diamonds that started out as coal and had incredible pressure applied to them in order for them to transform just the way that the caterpillar thinks it's about to die before it becomes a butterfly. Our emotions are those gold pieces in the rock and rubble, the diamonds that we either extract by finding the lesson from the experience so that we can actually let the emotion go back into motion the way that energy is meant to be or we can simply choose to continue looking at that pile that brings us down every time that we see the value that we didn't do anything with it. So if you've got an area of your life where maybe you went in and you've had a really rough experience and you've got it halfway to the sifting station, what if we just gave ourselves the grace of giving ourselves permission to get the rest of the way there or to just do the sifting station where we are and to just start where we are? because that's the only thing we have any ability to change ever. Now, this moment, it's the one that we had a hundred years ago if we were here or a thousand years from now, it's all happening right now, like a multi-dimensional layer cake. And right now, the rift that each of us are gonna have a chance to put into the effect that is the ripple we all get to feel is our music. Whether it be in a actual music or just the sound of our voice? Are we going to infuse our words with what will uplift or is it going to be something that's going to bring someone else down? And that's what we get to choose. So hopefully you can use some of the tools that we have created for each of you who are watching those in view be in the room. And then next time we hope that you'll be here too because you are a beautiful piece in the mosaic of life. And your emotions so, keep us out of the not now, and only we can bring it back. Who was that? Yeah, that was me. Laura, 
did you want to go through and read the different levels on the 22? The, you have laid out, yeah, I can see it's behind you okay. on my phone. It's terribly impossible to read. Oh, yeah, no problem. So basically, if you actually look up emotional guidance system, that is where you'll find these written out in chart form by Esther, okay. who channels, Esther Hicks channels the consciousness of Abraham, just in case you want to have a reference for your own self. Right. And then in terms of the apartment building theory, we start out grief, fear, depression, despair, powerlessness at the bottom where everything feels on top of you. Insecurity, guilt, and unworthiness is like the next emotion up because while they're still negative, they have more energy. It's moving faster. Jealousy, hatred, revenge, anger, discouragement, blame, worry. Have you ever heard that worry is like a rocking chair? It takes a lot of effort but gets us nowhere. And then doubt, disappointment, overwhelm, frustration, irritation, impatience pessimism, boredom, being the top of the downward spiral that takes us down, contentment being the bottom of the upward spiral that takes us into states of contentment, hopefulness, optimism, positive expectation or belief where the idea has become so familiar it feels safer and so then we expect that outcome. Enthusiasm, eagerness, happiness, passion, and then love, peace, joy, knowledge, empowerment, and freedom as the top emotions. So that is basically the application of two theories combined. And then the reason it took me so long to actually get it out in a bigger way is because I didn't specifically know what to say about it other than we have to actually start working with our own emotional states one at a time instead of trying to go from zero to hero we don't need to try to go from feeling depressed and powerless into being the superhero of the room we just have to go from being depressed into being angry because that has a lot more energy and once we're in that state of movement it's like we if you're a fan of abraham Esther hicks it's like we turn the canoe around and start flowing with the river instead of paddling up upstream and trying to go against the grain of our own nature. And then it's also to realize that just because things may be normal in this world, doesn't mean that it's natural. And so we really have to just use our emotions as tools and to start seeing them as friends. So even in the music, and I'm very aware that we're past the top of when we're gonna end this, so I, I wanna wrap it up. We just, it's so important for us to understand that our emotions are friends. They're tools that help us navigate the moments. And our feelings are the energetic interpretation of those energies in motion and what they mean for us. So if we start to look at our emotions in a different way, we can really navigate our own mental states in a way different experience because then it goes out of the mind and into the heart. And if we stop fearing, our emotions and our feelings, then we can be with our true selves more authentically. And that's what I feel like this music project can help us reach. So I really want to honor everyone for coming out today. I don't want to say it's the very end. If anyone else has something else that you want to contribute, because uh, I definitely see a lot of value here. And yet I did also want to make sure that we kept it to the hour and appreciate each of you for showing up today truly. I just wanted to add to what you just said about the emotions and allowing them to be there and what I found recently to be really profound is if like I did the same thing before is like not allowing it to be there like pushing it away swallowing it swallowing swallowing it down sorry it's late I'm really tongue-tied <laughs> um but it's breath so when I catch myself feeling something actually sitting down and allowing myself like allowing that emotion to be there because it's probably an aspect of myself from you know something's triggered me to feel like something that happened when I was a child so like actually like feeling compassion sitting have my hand on my solar plexus and breathing into that emotion just allowing it to be there until it's gone that might mean crying that might mean just sitting there and acknowledging it it might take 10 minutes it might take 30 seconds but actually allowing myself to, to experience it wholly has created so much more freedom than just 
you know or there's a like that the princess and the pea like i'll just put another mattress on top i'll just put another mattress on top until i don't know if you guys read that book it might be a british thing but it's um about a girl who doesn't like sleeping on bumpy beds and there's a one pea and she just keeps on putting mattresses on top versus just taking the pea out and so it's like that like we're just layering things on top but you're still uncomfortable because you haven't actually allowed yourself to fully experience that but if you just sat with it allowed it to be there create the space within yourself give yourself permission to be everything you are there's none of these emotions are bad or wrong we are having a human experience and just allow yourself to work through it until it feels complete so yeah I just wanted to share that towards it seemed perfect for what you were saying Laura beautiful and tell will you say what you were going to say even if it was already said yeah, she just said it. It's it's that emotions aren't bad no matter which place you're at. They're all a tool and they're all to show you what you need to work on. And it's it's all good, all of it. And, and you're never going to always be at the top. You can't, it's not the point. If you were always at the top, you wouldn't know what the top was. You wouldn't know it was good. And it's funny that you said the, the princess and the pea. My husband makes fun of me all the time. That's what he calls me. <laughs> amazing i love it all right thank you everyone you guys are absolutely amazing i'm grateful to be sharing this incarnation with you no you're amazing yeah. what were you gonna say no i just joked i was like no you're amazing no, we are all amazing so thank you guys for tuning in today everything that you said everything that you held space for you matter more than you could possibly imagine and I appreciate you for being part of the view today and look forward to seeing who comes next time. So uh, Tuesdays, 3.30 Eastern Standard Time is when we're going to be coming together next week for the Mad Hatter's Mystic Music Album 22 Summit. So you'll get to see many of these phenomenal people in the view talking about our music and what we're creating together and then Mental health is ultimately at the top of our mind, pun intended. So we want to just make sure you know you're fully supported and that we can laugh at ourselves and we can laugh at the seriousness of when it hurts and to know that you're not alone through that and that we send love and we're doing our best and we appreciate you for doing yours too. So thanks a lot. Have a phenomenal day, guys, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you, everyone. If you're interested, uh, the peaceful, uh, the peaceful inner warrior united lawfully organized summit is on Thursday at four. So come on out. Otherwise, if you want to be part of the music project, that's three thirty. And if you are available on Sundays and want to have some uplifting, I do a sacred uh, self compassion service at ten ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time as well Sundays. So. Come on out, let's just keep lifting and bringing good vibes and uh, keep sharing what comes in if you would as well too, please Jared. We'll talk anyway. Okay, that works. And, uh, you guys have a good one. Thanks for tuning in again. You guys are amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 444, you know I love it. Great time. <laughs> <Have a good laughs> <one>. <laughs>